Hello everyone, welcome to the third video of this series. In this series, we are talking about the clean architecture implementation by using the ASP.NET Core Web API framework. In two previous videos, we have covered so many things. In the first video, we did the setup of the clean architecture by using the ASP.NET Core. And in the second video, we did the implementations of all the CRUD operations by using the Entity Framework Core and the SQL Server. We were also using the CQRS pattern by using the Mediator and all those concepts are working fine. But if you will notice that there is something that we have written hard coded as of now and that is the connection string that we are using for our database. Instead of using the hard coded value, ideally we should get that from the app settings file. In this video, we will talk about how to read the value of the connection string from our app setting file and use that in our infrastructure layer. We will also talk about little bit about the options pattern. Now using all these concepts are very easy if you are dealing only with one application which is the main ASP.NET Core Web API application. But if you are using the class libraries, then using these concepts are little bit trickier, not the complex because there are few additional things required. And in this video, we will learn how to set up this options pattern in the class library project. So let's start. The entire source code of this course is available at my GitHub repository. You can visit this link. The link will be given in the description box below. And here you will notice we are having this main branch and there are some source and there is this readme file as well. If you think that there is something that we need to improve, then feel free to raise a pull request on this repository and I will be happy to merge that. Now let's implement this options pattern in our ASP.NET Core application by using the clean architecture. Here I'm using the same application that we have created in our two previous videos. If I open my infrastructure layer, here you will notice that in the dependency injection, we are getting this value as an hard coded. Now as a first step, we will have to move it from this place to the app settings file. And the app settings file are only available with this main application. Class library applications does not have any app settings file. So it is totally okay when you run this application, then these class libraries can read the data from this main application app settings file. So you can define all your settings over here in this main application. Here I'm using this app settings.json file, but if you will notice that there is one more app settings.development.json file, you can get n number of files over here. And the concept is that all the child file will override the value that you have written in the main file. So if you are running this application in the development, which we are using right now, the debug mode, then the settings that you have written with same name in the app settings and in the development file, then the development file will override the settings from this main file. So let's use the connection string over here and let's put default connection, which is fine. So let's just get the value of the connection string from this dependency injection file. There we are. So I can simply cut it from here, go back over here and let's just paste the value at this place. To read the data from your app setting file, there is one interface which is I configuration. By using that configuration, you can read all the values from your app settings file. First approach could be we can use the I configuration over here. After putting a comma, you can use I configuration. Let's use the configuration over here. Let's use that configuration over here. So what we can do, you can use this configuration dot get connection string and in this connection string we can simply pass the key that you have written in our app settings file so here we are and that's the key that we have written default connection let's use that over here now remember we are calling this method from our main application and let's find out this reference here you will notice that this is the place where we are using it so if you are using that i configuration parameter over there then you will have to pass its value from this place and to pass the value, first we need to get that value over here in this method. So how can we get that? I configuration and then the configuration. Now let's just pass that value over here like this. Now again we are calling this method from our program.cs file. So let's go over there as well. And here we can pass this value by using this builder.configuration. Let's just build this application and see if everything is working fine or not. Here you will notice that the build is successful. Let's quickly run this application just to see if we are getting the values or not. There we go. Let's click on this get employees. Click over here, execute. And we are getting the data. It means that connection string that we are reading from our app setting file is working fine. But we are not using the options pattern over here. 
we are simply using the i configuration interface and by using that we are reading that value now let's focus on how to work on the options pattern to work with the options pattern you need to create a class so we can create that class in our core project so let's right click over here add a new folder options and over here let's just add a new class add new item and you can give any meaningful name over here so because here i'm dealing with the connection strings so i can write connection string options i'm adding this options as a postfix just to do for the dto's for the models etc so let's click on this add button and this will add a new class over here let's make it public so let's first add a new property over here and that's the default connection and here we can create one field as well so let's just do that public the value of this field is connection strings and this value is coming from this app settings .json file so whatever you will define over here that you can put as a name at this place you can give let's say the name or maybe the section name just to make it more clear because this is the section name okay now you may have more than one property over here first one is this default connection and for this default connection we have created one property at this place if you are having more than one let's say if i add a new line over here and you are having one more property maybe identity connection or some other connection string or any other value then you can create one more property in your class and you will get all those values in that class now let's just remove this warning as well so we can do that easily by using this concept now we have to add this class in our di container so what is the best place to add that i have seen most of the developers prefer to use it in the infrastructure layer but what will happen if you want to use some of the values in your core layer then what would you do in my opinion it is a good practice if you are adding these options in the core layer so let's open the core and in the code you will notice we are having this dependency injections and over here we will add that class so how can we do that so here you will notice we are having this services dot configure as of now we don't have that configure method so first let me tell you how can you use it if you are dealing with the main application so so maybe first we can learn over here so this is the program root cs class of our main api so here it is builder dot services dot configure and in this configure we can add this connection string and we can simply use that builder dot connection dot get connection and this is how we can use it so let's just comment it and we will be using the same concept in our class library project so let's go back over there and here you will notice that we are not getting this configure so we will have to add some packages at this place and we will also be using that configuration over here and to add this package let's just click on this quick actions and this will ask you to install this package microsoft.extension.configuration.abstraction and because we are dealing with the option so we have to add one more package at this place so let's just right click on this core application and open the NuGet packages over here go back to this browse and add this package it is microsoft.extensions.options.configure-extensions let's search for this one and you will notice that there is a package you can use the latest one as of now the latest is this 8.0 although there is one in the preview version but i want the stable version let's install it see other changes and go back over here and this time if i will try to open this i configure then you will notice that this is accessible and we can copy the code from our main program root cs class and we need this connection strings options over there like this now in the bracket we can use the configuration and here we will have to use this configuration dot get section because we are dealing with one section and at this place we will have to provide the name of our section either you can provide the hard-coded name at this place or you can use that field that we have created inside this connection string options class so section name like this and this is the reason that we created the field over there otherwise apart from that there is no use of that field if you want to write the value over here as an hard coded then you can remove that field from your class and that's all we are done over here now we can use this configuration anywhere in our application and for the demonstration purpose i will be using this class at several places but first let's focus on our connection string and over there if i want to update the change so here we are in this 
my app infrastructure and over here you will notice that we are using this static class so we cannot use the dependency injection really well at this place so what we can do along with this options there is one more parameter that we can use and that parameter name could be anything so let's assume that it is provider and the second one is this options so now by using this provider i can get the services that we have registered in this application how to do that so let's first remove this thing so what i'm doing over here is provider dot here you notice that we are having this get services or get required services you can use any one of them and at this place i will have to provide some interfaces so if you are dealing with the options pattern then there are three interfaces one is the i options another one is i options monitor i options snapshot apart from these three there are more like the key options and there are more but these are the main important and here we can use any one of them so let's use this i option snapshot what is the name of our class it is connection string option this one the value dot the default connection and that is all we need to write over here and this time we don't have to use this configuration over here so we can simply remove it from this place now let's go back to our core application and open that dependency injection there we are so we have to use that in our dependency injection container so if i open this main api and that's the dependency injection over here i can use the third one as well like this and here let's pass this configuration and we have to use that namespace so it is my app dot core and this time we don't have to pass this configuration in our add infrastructure layer so let's quickly recap what we have done so far first we are trying to access the connection string by using the i configuration interface then we are using the options pattern and in the options pattern we have created one class so it has two things one is one field and another one is a property that property is having the same name that we have in our app settings file for that connection string and we have registered this options class in our di container in the core application and this time in the db context registration we are getting the value of our connection string by using this options pattern so let's just run this application and see how things are working now you will notice we are having this debugger at this place and if i want to see the value of this default connection let's right click and click on that quick watch then you will notice that we are getting the value over here so in the similar way you can get any value from your app settings file it is not only about connection string if you are having some other values as well and you want to get them in your application then you can use this similar approach you can create one more class in your application and the best place would be to create them in the core application and then register one more over here so add similar line at this place the name of your class and then the related binding over here and then you can simply use it anywhere you can use it in the controller level you can use it in your infrastructure layer you can use it in your application layer or you can also use it in your core application now quickly just for the demonstration purpose let's use it in our controller layer and where is the controller it is in the main application so that's the controller employee controller and here just for the testing purpose let's use that i options or you can use any one of them you can use i options i options snapshot or i options monitor so let's use that class name over here the class name is that connection string options let's just make the changes at this place so i will be using this options dot value dot the default connection so what i'm doing now this is just for the demonstration that instead of returning all the employees this time i'm returning the value of this default connection let's just run this application and let's put a breakpoint over here this is the get employees click over here execute we are hitting the breakpoint at this place and you will notice that in the values we are having one property which is this connection string and this is how you can use the options anywhere in your application see we are getting this data so let's just reward this change from this controller and that's it in this video in this video we have successfully configured our options pattern in asp.net core application while using the clean architecture and the learning from this video is how to use this options pattern this dependency injection this tv context in a class library project that is very important if you are having any questions or doubt feel free to ask them in the comment section below and if you like this content then i would really appreciate if you will subscribe to the channel and like the video thank you for watching have a great day